Hello, my name is Kay Morgan. Uh, my literature review is Robo Ethics in Human Robot Collaboration. This is a review of ethical challenges in frameworks in engineering design. So today we're diving into the world of robo ethics. This is a field that bridges robotics and ethics. This area has become especially important. As you know, robots and artificial intelligence systems become more embedded in our daily lives. So robot ethics is all about designing and deploying robotic systems with moral responsibility. It includes human robot interaction, of course, the role of engineers in making ethical choices and ensuring that these technologies respect human values. As Dignum 2018 puts it, ethics shouldn't be an afterthought. It needs to be built in from the beginning. So why does this matter for us as engineers? Well, because we design systems that directly impact people so we are responsible for preventing harm, programming ethics into algorithms, and protecting human dignity, like privacy. So if people don't trust the systems we built, then they won't use them. One paper that I researched in this literature review, the IEEE Global Initiative, points out that putting ethics first helps build that trust and enhances our well-being. Now let's talk about some real ethical challenges from my literature review. First is autonomy. When robots make decisions like in self-driving cars or drones, we gotta think about how much control should they have. Who's, who's liable if something goes wrong. We also face bias in AI, which is artificial intelligence, which can lead to unfair decisions and transparency because users need to know how robots make choices. So these issues are complex and deeply ethical. Of course, in this review, I um, I researched about 20 literature uh, sources in robot ethics. I looked at how these papers apply ethical frameworks and analyze whether they address real-world problems. So I found some shared common values while others reveal big gaps in how we currently approach ethics and robotics from my analysis of these papers. Lin's 2012 article lays a broad map of ethical concerns. It's really great for framing the topic. Anderson and Anderson's group 2007 piece looks at machine ethics, but mostly in theory. Then there is Freeman's work on value-sensitive design. It's all about integrating ethics early in the design phase, so that's something we can use. Bernstein and Pearson, um, they talk about robot caregivers. It's a, it's a fresh take, because robots could mean more freedom, but also raise privacy questions. While like an Ellen group explore how machines can reason morally, Sharky and Sharky group warned that robots used as nannies might emotionally harm our kids. So these views, these views help us see the emotional and social side of ethics. So what did we learn from these sources? Ethics can be tacked on later. Now I found it needs to be part of the system from the beginning, but most of these works still lack real-world testings based on my analysis of this literature. So we need more research that connects theory to practice and application, especially as robots become more adaptive and intelligent. 
So let's look at case studies in robo-ethics. These are real examples. So Alkin's work on drones shows the risk of lethal autonomy. In healthcare, of course, robots can be efficient, but we have to think about do they really show empathy? Kuckelberg sets uh, they may be not. Then, of course, we have the classic self-driving car dilemma. And we have to think about should it save passengers or pedestrians. Kent in 1788, we, we, we should remember that he argued humans must be treated as ends and not mere means. Of course, the Lynn's group in 2012, they say that the ethical robots must ensure technological progress and that, uh, that does not erode fundamental human rights or create systems that prioritize efficiency over moral responsibility. All these case studies show how ethics plays out in our real life. Now I came up with two great videos to support my literature review. And the first video, Dr. Kate Darling from MIT explores uh, in this video our emotional connections to robots and the ethical implications of these relationships. So let's listen in to Dr. Kate Darling. Can anyone tell me what this is? Hitchbot! Yes, it's Hitchbot. What does Hitchbot do? You hitchhike. Hitchbot asks people to put it in their car and take it somewhere. And as many of you have heard, this robot made it all the way across Canada and through some parts of Europe, relying purely on the kindness of strangers. And then, two weeks ago, Hitchbot was vandalized. It was trying to cross the United States and someone broke it beyond repair. And honestly, I was a little bit surprised that it took this long for something bad to happen to Hitchbot. <laughs> but I was even more surprised by the amount of tension, attention that this case got. I mean, it made international headlines <laughs> and there was just an outpouring of sympathy and support from thousands and thousands of people for Hitchbot. Of course, in this video, she talks about how people get emotionally attached to robots and why that's ethically tricky. The next video discusses the moral and ethical considerations in designing autonomous robots, highlighting the importance of embedding ethical frameworks into our robotic system. In this video is the ethical robot. Let's listen to it. to me we have the opportunity for coming up with a new perspective in thinking about ethics with machine ethics because what we're going to think about is how we want machines, robots, for example, to treat us. Our research began trying to see whether ethics could be computed. How do you even represent ethics in a machine? I mean, there's just a bunch of zeros and ones, so somehow you have to find a representation scheme. It's a two-step process by which we, we uh, try to put ethical principles into a machine. First step is to find out, get a principle. We use a technique called machine learning that takes cases of ethical dilemmas and feed this information to this, to this machine. And it slowly builds a principle that covers the correct answer. It learns features, duties, and is able to discover a decision principle from the input given by, by the ethicist. So this uh, the ethical robots video talks about designing robots with ethical frameworks baked in. So these two videos, both of them help us understand how ethics applies to design choices. Of course, when we look at the frameworks and guidelines, there are some uh, useful frameworks that we can follow. IEEE's Ethically Aligned Design, and we also have EU's Ethic Guidelines and the Value Sensitive Design that help shape how we think about robot behavior. Asimov's laws are a fun start. 
but real regulation has to go deeper, and we need to balance machine decisions with human oversight. So, to design responsibly, engineers we need to we need ethics in training. It should be part of STEM education, not just for philosophy majors. We also need to reflect on how our work affects people and create standards that make us, of course, accountable. So this supports NSPE's professional responsibility codes too. When we look at all future trends in robo ethics, we gotta think about where is robo ethics headed. We'll need ethics that adapt as artificial intelligence learns. And of course, Kim et L, they they say ethics need to be dynamic. Uh, we we'll, we'll also need global policy, emotional intelligence in robots in systems that promote fairness, not just functionality. So to wrap up my literature review and analysis, I should say robo-ethics isn't just important. Based on my analysis, I found that it is essential. We have to lead with ethics, build it into our designs and educate ourselves and of course others. So it's how we create technology that uplifts people rather than replacing them in human robots collaboration. And that is the end of my presentation. And here are my references. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you.